Nothing gets better by itself, okay? Take a look at your hairdo when you wake up in the morning. You'll see what I'm talking about. Everything tends toward chaos. There is Sue at 20. Here she is at 90. And here she is at 3,000. Mm -hmm. so, it's going to be you too, by the way, and me too. No. But the textbook says we're getting better. Humans probably evolved from bacteria more than 4 billion years ago. Was your great, 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 great grandpa bacteria? Now, the evolutionists will say, Hovind, don't you know you can add energy and overcome the second law of thermodynamics? And they'll say the sun adds energy to the earth, so that's how evolution works, because the earth receives extra energy. Well, it sounds good, but that doesn't, it's not true, okay? It's a deceitful argument. You see, the universe is a closed system by definition. Secondly, adding energy is destructive unless there's something to use the energy. Just adding energy doesn't solve it. Did you know the Japanese added a whole bunch of energy to Pearl Harbor one day? They did not organize a thing for us, did they? A couple of years later, we returned the favor and added energy to some of their cities, didn't we? Didn't organize nothing. I'm telling you, folks, adding energy is destructive. See, the sun adds energy to your house, but it's going to destroy the roof on your house, not build it. The sun's energy will destroy your entire house. The sun's energy will destroy the roof on your car. It'll destroy the paint job on your car. It'll destroy the fabric and your drapes and your upholstery and your carpet. There's only one thing that can use the sun's energy, chlorophyll. And one little plant cell is more complex than a space shuttle. And you want to believe it evolved by chance, you just go ahead and enjoy yourself. I don't care what you believe, but that's not science. Now, this textbook shows the kids a fossil of a starfish. And it says, boys and girls, 3.4 billion years old, the remains of the early ancestors of modern human beings. Was your great, 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 great grandpa a starfish? I bet he could pick peaches like crazy. All right, now please do not laugh at this next picture. This will be a picture of my brother when he first wakes up in the morning after his first cup of coffee, which apparently was a little too strong. By the way, kids, we need to warn you, listen carefully. Kids, pay attention. Do not drink coffee. Because if you drink coffee when you're young, when you get married, your babies will be born naked and illiterate. And tea is worse. There was an Indian once that drank four gallons of iced tea. That night, he drowned in his teepee. <laughs> Serious stuff. Don't drink that. Anyway, this, this will be a picture of my brother. Now, please don't laugh. He can't help it. There he is right there. Notice what the textbook says. 30 million years ago. Now, kids, let me translate that for you. Anytime a book says millions of years ago, what it really means is long ago and far away. It means a fairy tale is coming next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 30 million years ago, these critters evolved. Ooh, there's that word again. You've got to watch that one, remember? Six different meanings. It says they're ancestral to both humans and modern apes. Ancestors to humans? Grandpa? What well, big eyes you have, Grandpa. <laughs> uh, the better to see you with, my boy. You know, we've been teaching our kids they're nothing but an animal, and today a lot of them act like animals. Barbara Reynolds figured it out. She's a liberal journalist. She said, your kids go ape in school? Here's why. He's being taught evolution. Guess what, Johnny? You're an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. Uh, you mean I'm just an animal? <laughs> okay. <laughs> What do you expect? Have you noticed the rock and roll music these days is all full of death and destruction and blood? Well, the Bible says they that hate me love death. That's the problem. Kids are taught today there are no absolutes. By the way, if evolution is true, that's exactly correct. I've asked this question to evolutionists all over the world. I've never had one answer, a simple question. I'll say, hey, sir or ma'am, I have a simple question for you. If evolution is true, how do we tell right from wrong? How does anybody tell right from wrong if evolution is true? They say there are no absolutes. One professor I debated said there are no absolutes. I said, are you absolutely sure? 
<laughs> Blew his little brain. Now, wait, 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 how can I be sure of that? Yes, they're absolutes. Thus saith the Lord. That's absolute. And the Lord said, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Some people, maybe, maybe they just don't know. Okay, I understand. Maybe they just don't care what God's Word says. But God told us what to do, and we're not doing it. Okay? Anyway, that's another long, interesting story. Um, teachers don't seem to understand. It's perfectly fine for you to teach creation science in a public school. If you're a public school teacher and you want to teach the kids about creation, just do it. You don't need to ask any questions. You don't need to get any permission. There's never been a law against teaching creation science. Now, two states pass laws to require creation be taught, Arkansas and Louisiana. In both cases, the court struck it down and said you cannot require that they teach creation. If you passed a law in California that said you are required to breathe, <laughs> the court would strike it down. You're not. You can't require that they breathe. I mean, you probably should, okay? But they can't make you if you don't want to, all right? And so they can't require creation be taught. Even Stephen Gould said, no statute exists in any state to bar instruction in creation science. It could be taught before and it can be taught now. There's never been a law against teaching creation in the schools. Never. We cover much more on that in video five. What's happened, though, the ACLU, which is the American Communist Lawyers Union, <laughs> they have... Yeah. <clears throat> the ACLU has learned all they have to do is threaten to sue a school. They don't have to sue them. They threaten to sue, and the principal calls in the teachers and says, okay, guys, now listen. Don't teach creation because we might get sued. Now the teacher's got a problem. The court says they can. The law says they can. Their boss says they can't. And that's where it's breaking down, right there. But if a teacher does get up in front of their class and teach evolution, if you get up there and say, okay, kid, listen, you started off like a slime and you very slowly evolved to a human. You don't need to be a genius to figure out that teaching is going to destroy some kid's faith in the Bible. And anybody that destroys a child's faith better see what Jesus has to say about that. He said, Whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Jesus said, be not, John, James said, Be not many masters, knowing we shall receive the greater condemnation. Back in the 1950s, here in America, there was very little evolution in the average textbook. Two to three thousand words in the whole textbook. They didn't talk about it much. Then in 1957, the Russians beat us in the space race by launching Sputnik. And Americans panicked. <clears throat> How many of you are old enough to remember the panic in America when the Russians were winning the space race? People were building bomb shelters. I mean, it was horrible, right? And somebody said, well, the Russians are ahead in science. That's why, you know, because they teach evolution. That's why they're beating us in the space race. Uh, excuse me. What does evolution have to do with putting up a satellite? Mm. Then in 1959, it was the 100-year anniversary of Charlie Darwin's book coming out. And in 1959, Eisenhower asked Congress for $1 billion to teach evolution to the kids in school. He said, we need to get a whole new science curriculum pushing evolution. One organization, the National Science Foundation, got $10,500,000, developed a nine-part theme curriculum teaching evolution. They produced a series called BSCS, Biological Sciences Curriculum Study. And by 1963... The, uh, yeah, I won't go off on that. Uh, <clears throat> the average textbook in America had 33,000 words about evolution. 